Now take a look at the situation inside the store. Every checkout lane was open and packed and there was a line that went deep into the store. Again, this wasn't a weekend shopping rush. This was tonight just before five. One shopper described it as mayhem. Bumper to bumper traffic. I'm afraid the prices are going to go back up again too. And packed buggies. Uh, they're out of toilet paper and paper towels, so I gotta go somewhere else and get that. As shoppers quickly stock up. When I got inside Sam's, I quickly realized that people were in panic mode. It's mayhem. As soon as a pallet is dropped of paper towels or a tissue, it's gone. I mean, they like there's people. There were people lined up for the guy to drop the pallets. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. Welcome back to the David Seaton Show. I just wanna jump right into this, but before we do anything, I have to do a housekeeping thing. Do me a favor, subscribe, comment, like, and turn on your notification bell. That way you will be alerted every time we upload a new video. I've got to jump into this story about the strikes that are going on at the ports all along the East Coast and along the Gulf Coast, you may or may not know it, but these strikes are going to impact you directly in the form of higher prices, in the form of artificial inflation, all of this happening right around the time of the presidential election. Not enough people are paying attention, but in case you are just hearing about this story, this is why this news should be important to you. Dock workers are on strike. Tens of thousands of union members walked off the job at midnight at major ports along the East Coast and the Gulf of Mexico. They're striking over pay and concerns about automation. And the picketing could put a strain on shipping as we head into the holiday season. ABC4's John Caddy's Klimak is live in San Pedro, where the port of L.A. is up and running this morning. John. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, that's an important thing to know. We are up and running. There have been no issues happening here at the Port of L.A. or Long Beach as a result of this strike that has now taken place. But the question is, will that last? That remains to be seen. I want you to look at this. There are 14 ports that are all now on strike right now and closed this morning on the East Coast and the Gulf Coast of the U.S. And it could impact what we're seeing in Los Angeles and Long Beach uh, in the coming weeks if it goes long enough. Okay, did you catch that? You're talking about 14 different ports from as far north as Boston all along the eastern seaboard and then going into the Gulf at Tampa, Mobile, New Orleans, and Houston. So some of these ports on the west coast are going to try and take up some of the slack, but there's absolutely no way that the ports on the west coast can take up all of the capacity from the East Coast and the Gulf states. And these workers, you, you can make the argument that they should get a higher wage, they, they should get a fairer wage, but they are asking for not only a higher wage, as high as 77%, but they're also asking that their jobs are not going to get replaced by automation. Who has the ability in the 21st century to ask for their jobs not to be replaced by automation in the age of AI and robotics. That's, to me, that's an unreasonable ask of these union workers. Let's continue to take a listen to the rest of the story. The executive director of the Port of L.A. telling CNBC that right now business here is up 17 percent from last year. He points to a strong underlying U.S. economy and the fact that purchase orders go out usually 90 to 120 days before cargo actually gets into the port. So that delay, so to speak, is a good thing for ports. And when it comes to what will happen with closed ports back east, the executive director says the ports here are open and ready for more cargo. But he warns about the impacts should this strike go for too long. It is a really big deal. But again, trying to get down to the tactics of making sure that the workers get what they need, companies continue to bring in this cargo is of paramount importance. Making sure that these gateways stay open as we're on the doorstep of the retail holiday season just adds another layer to underscore that we need to get this done quickly. Do me a favor to those of you who are watching this video, think back to the time of the pandemic. Think about the time that you went to the stores and you saw the empty shelves. 
Think about the times that you went to the stores and you saw limit one per customer. Think about that time that you went to the store and you saw that last roll of toilet paper that someone grabbed before you got the opportunity to grab it and you didn't know where else to go to buy it. Those are the times that are coming back if we don't get this under control and there's some levers that we can pull. There's some things the White House can do. There's some things that, that other people can do to bring these two sides together. But again, what the union workers are asking for up to a 61 to 77 percent raise and they don't want to be replaced by automation i think that's unreasonable the ila has told us the number when it comes to a wage increase they are seeking that number 61.5 percent the president of the ila speaking exclusively to cnbc earlier today about the negotiations and I just want to confirm with you, around 61% is what you're looking for. I, I didn't stutter. I said so. Around 61.5. Around 61.5. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Dang. You have a good day. You do. You have a great day. So again, that was the ILA president saying 61.5% is the number they're seeking. USMX, that's the port operators, they refused to comment on that number. And they said to refer to their statement from yesterday that the two exchange counteroffers, USMX issuing that statement before the deadline saying the two traded counteroffers, then they would offer wage increases of nearly 50% and also uh, add to employer contributions when it came to health care and retirement and also maintain current language when it came to automation and semi-automation, a very contentious issue when it comes to this negotiation. We also spoke to the White House. They didn't want to comment on the wage demands from the ILA, but they did note that the real wages for the East and Gulf Coast port workers have actually declined over the last six years. They also said they wanted to refer to their earlier statement from today, saying in part, President Biden and Vice President Harris are closely monitoring the strike at East Coast and Gulf Coast ports. The president has directed his team to convey his message directly to both sides that they need to be at the table and negotiating in good faith, fairly and quickly. Uh, the White House also maintaining it would not use the Taft-Hartley Act to keep ports open and force negotiations. However, I've been speaking to many industry groups and their leaders. They want the Biden administration to take further action. Many of them saying across a number of industries, I'm talking spirits, auto parts, agricultural apparel, that a strike is going to be devastating for not only consumers, but for their businesses. Do me a favor and go back a couple of frames and look at those numbers again. 91% of pharmaceuticals are imported. 54% of automobiles are imported. 51% of aerospace, that's planes, that's rockets, imported into the United States. Overall, 56% imports. And people don't understand that when these goods get shipped and they are imported, they're put on a ship, that ship sails to one of those ports on the East Coast and in the Gulf Coast. That ship gets unloaded. Those container crates get offloaded off of those ships onto trucks. Then those trucks drive those goods to a distribution house and then they are sent to the actual retail location where you and I go in and actually buy these products. So if these workers at these ports are not working, none of those goods get onto the trucks. That means the truck drivers are not working. That also means that if the truck drivers aren't delivering those goods to the distribution warehouses, that means those individuals aren't working. And then if the, if the goods aren't getting from the distribution uh, centers to the retail locations, then those individuals don't have goods to sell and people don't have a place to go and buy the things that they need. This is going to have a ripple effect throughout the economy, and we have 45,000 people. Think about this for a moment. We have 45,000 union workers who are holding 330 million Americans hostage because they want a 61.5% raise. And the union leader has said as much. You just heard him in the previous segment, but listen to him say it again here. Nobody knew what the longshoremen were. We didn't get respected, but now we will. COVID now we will when they find out malls are going to shut down because goods can't come in. Yeah. Car right. salesmen are going to get laid off. Well, guess what? Everything that comes in this country comes from the containers off these ships. Now leaving a madhouse and empty shelves in the stores. I saw everybody in here just grabbing everything off the shelf. I'm like, I better go ahead and get it today. In Mobile, Haley Kennedy, WKRG News 5.
So you heard the union leader right there. He's basically saying, hey, we are willing to take this economy down if it means that's what we have to do in order for us to get what it is that we want. It's a delicate balance. I'm not against unions. I'm not against people collective bargaining for a fair wage. However, we cannot allow 45,000 people to commandeer an entire economy of 330 million people, especially since you just had the hurricane that went through Florida and devastated North Carolina. Those individuals who are being impacted by these weather events, they need the goods and services that are sitting on those container ships at those ports. And we, like I said, you've got these people, these longshoremen, you know, God bless them. They, they do a fantastic job keeping all of us in a place where we have the convenience of going to stores and buying the goods and services that we want and need and use every day. But we cannot allow, I don't believe we can allow 45,000 people to hold this entire country hostage. I want to hear from you. So I've, this is, we've been putting these videos up for a while and obviously you know and we encourage you, like I said at the beginning of the video, subscribe to the channel. That helps our channel grow. Uh, that helps us reach our goals. We are making these incremental uh, changes as we're continuing to upload this content for you. Uh, you also have two other ways that you can follow The David Seaton Show. You can follow The David Seaton Show on Facebook and you can also follow The David Seaton Show on Instagram. Again, we are going to continue to bring this content from, uh, to you. We hope you enjoy it. Again, subscribe, like, comment, turn on your notification bell. This is The David Seaton Show. We'll see you soon.